Welcome back to Structures Unchained, your weekly deep dive into the world's boldest mega projects. This week, we're in Jakarta, a city that refuses to be slowed down by its own size. How do you keep 30 plus million people moving, meeting, and making a living in one of the world's most congested cities? You don't wait for the city to catch up, you leap ahead. These are the mega projects turning Jakarta from chaos into coordination. And they're not dreams, they're happening. This is no longer the pilot phase. The Jabodebek LRT is operating at scale, and the numbers speak louder than any ribbon-cutting speech. In September 2025 alone, it moved 2,449,304 passengers, a 25% year-over-year increase. And with a 99.8% on-time performance rate, it's not just moving people, it's reshaping how people plan their lives. Running approximately 42 kilometers and linking 18 elevated, driverless stations, Jabodebek is creating a new kind of city logic. Suddenly, places like Bakazi and Deepak aren't far. They're a few reliable transfers away. What's most compelling is the adoption curve. August 2025 saw record ridership. September broke it again. This isn't a novelty wave, it's a behavioral shift. When transit becomes predictable, people start building their day around it. Habits take root. Cities adapt around those habits. Behind the scenes, this is also a test of Jakarta's ability to maintain complex, tech-heavy infrastructure at scale. So far, the LRT is passing with flying colors. Why it matters. Jakarta's greatest challenge is scale. Jabodebek meets it not by building more roads, but by making time itself more predictable. The result? A city that feels more navigable, less frustrating, and a workforce that's no longer stuck in gridlock purgatory. If Jabodebek is the orbital track, MRT Phase 2A is the spine, and every great transit system needs one. Stretching roughly 5.8 kilometers underground from Bundaran HI to Kota, the second phase of Jakarta's MRT is tunneling under the most politically, historically, and economically vital parts of the city. Thamrin, Monas, Harmony. These are not just stops, they're icons. And by May 2025, the Thamrin Monas segment hit nearly 88% completion. It's not just about engineering, it's about deadlines with teeth. In late September, Vice President Gibran personally visited the sites and issued an unmistakable directive. Segment 1, Bundaran HI to Harmony, must be operational by 2027. Segment 2, Harmony to Kota by 2029. And this matters. Jakarta's economic and political engine runs through these zones. If you can get through the city center without a motorbike or a miracle, you've unlocked a level of mobility that changes how people work, shop, and live. What's more, this tunnel system is being built to last. The climate-controlled stations, multimodal hubs, and resilient design show that this isn't just about moving bodies, it's about moving the capital forward. Why it matters. The core of a city should be where transit shines, not where it stalls. MRT Phase 2A is the unflashy, absolutely essential connector that lets the rest of the region breathe. And it's being built with urgency. Whoosh is the 142-kilometer high-speed line linking Jakarta and Bandung. And yes, it delivers. Launched October 2nd, 2023, Whoosh is Southeast Asia's first bullet train. Capable of up to 350 kilometers per hour, it makes the trip between the two major cities in under an hour. No toll roads. No three-hour highway crawl. By mid-2025, Whoosh had already carried over 10 million passengers. That's 10 million decisions to skip the car and take the timetable instead. These aren't novelty rides. These are lifestyle changes. Of course, it came with controversy. 7.3 billion US dollars is no small sum, and delays and budget overruns made headlines. But now that it's running, the public reaction speaks louder than the audits. Beyond the immediate impact, Whoosh is the first chapter of something bigger. 
It's a proof of concept for an eventual Java-wide high-speed rail network. Once people understand that 40 minutes can get them to a city that used to take half a day, they don't want to go back. Why it matters. Speed resets expectations. Whoosh isn't just fast, it's transformative. It gives people back their time and opens up economic corridors that used to be fantasy. Once that expectation is set, there's no going back. It's not a rail line. It doesn't move people day to day. But make no mistake, Jakarta International Stadium is a mega project that tests everything else. Opened in 2022 in North Jakarta, JIS is a symbol. With a capacity of 82,000, a retractable roof, and a striking design, it positions Jakarta as a regional player in major sports and entertainment. At 4.5 trillion rupiah, approximately 312 million US dollars, it's not just a building, it's a signal. But stadiums don't succeed on architecture alone. They succeed on access. And JIS is a monster stress test for the city's evolving transit web. Can the LRT, MRT, and buses move tens of thousands out of the venue without gridlock? Can crowds be dispersed in minutes, not hours? JIS doesn't add new kilometers of rail but it proves whether the system can handle pressure. Every concert, every match, every full capacity night becomes a civic simulation. Why it matters. You can't claim world-class status with a stadium if people can't get home from it. JIS is the challenge, and Jakarta's transport system is learning to rise to it. Then there's the project that doesn't just reshape the city, it defends it. Jakarta's ongoing battle with water, subsidence, tidal floods, and rising sea levels is pushing the limits of conventional planning. Enter the giant seawall, a proposed mega barrier stretching across the northern coastline of Java, including Jakarta, designed to protect millions of residents and trillions of rupiah in assets. The vision? A approximately 700 kilometer coastal shield extending from Banten to East Java. The estimated cost? Around 80 billion US dollars, making it one of the most ambitious climate infrastructure efforts on the planet. This isn't just a seawall, it's a long bet on survival. While still in its early phases, the Indonesian government has reaffirmed its commitment in 2025, inviting international investors, forming a dedicated North Java Coastal Authority, and beginning phased planning under the 2025 to 2029 National Strategic Project List. The wall is controversial. Environmental groups raise concerns over coastal hydrology and displacement, and engineering experts warn that it must be paired with serious groundwater management to be effective. Unlike a rail line, you can't measure this one in ridership. You measure it in coastline saved, homes not flooded, lives not displaced. Jakarta sinks by an average of 1 to 10 centimeters per year in some areas. The wall is not optional, it's insurance. Why it matters. Urban movement is meaningless if the city itself is underwater. The giant seawall reframes Jakarta's story, not just as a city of motion, but as a city fighting to stay on the map. Jakarta isn't just expanding, it's transforming. These projects aren't about size. They're about function, resilience, and building a city that works on any day, in any weather. From high-speed rail to seawalls, what's rising here isn't just infrastructure. It's a new way to live in a mega metro. This is how you build time back into the day, stability into the skyline, and possibility into the map. Subscribe to follow the transformation station by station, line by line. Because the future isn't waiting, it's already under construction.